frostbite. Frostbite is an extensive damage to the soft tissue due to exposure to a temperature below freezing. Frostbite occurs more in males. The body protects itself from cold by thermoregulation. The body tries to maintain a core body temperature. So during extreme cold, the body receives a signal from the sensory receptors. For example, these receptors are present in the hand and feet, and the signal will go up to the brain. The posterior thalamus is responsible for regulating the body temperature during exposure to cold. Once the signal reaches the brain, the brain sends a signal to the body in order to respond to cold temperatures and to maintain a core body temperature. This is necessary in order to provide the vital organs with the necessary heat to function properly. The brain will send a signal to the smooth muscle cells of the blood vessels of the skin and the skeletal muscles. The smooth muscle cells which like the arteries and the arterioles will contract or vasoconstrict. So during cold, this signal from the brain causes vasoconstriction or contraction of the smooth muscle cells, which allow the body to shift the blood to more vital areas of the body. At or below 0 degrees Celsius, which is about 32 Fahrenheit, the blood vessels close to the skin start to constrict which helps to preserve the core body temperature. Another signal from the brain goes to the skeletal muscles, which quickly contracts them, causing shivering and helps to keep the body warm. As the body forces the muscles to work, shivering, it breaks down the ATP that will also release energy. The ATP is converted into ADB and releases free phosphate and the energy to warm up the body. The condition of frostbite usually affects the hands and the feet. The toes have very little local metabolic heat production because of their small muscle mass and the capacity to generate heat decreases with tissue temperature. When the temperature drops below minus 2 degrees Celsius, ice crystals are formed in the extracellular fluid. The water moves from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment, causing cell dehydration and death. The sensory nerve endings are affected early and the condition can be painless. Causes of frostbite include inadequate circulation in below freezing weather, inadequate clothing, wind chills, wet clothes, poor circulation, tight boots, and cramped position. The risk factors are alcohol, Smoking. The tobacco reduces nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator. Peripheral vascular disease, peripheral neuropathy, chronic illness, malnutrition, mental illness, some medications such as beta blockers. Clinical features. The patient may have a skin erythema, edema, and may be the presence of mottled skin. In most significant cases, there will be blisters present. Blisters may be painless. There are usually two kinds of blisters present. Superficial lesions due to partial thickness injury. These are white, clear blisters. And hemorrhagic blisters from deeper lesions, which indicate a full thickness injury. Treatment. 
Splint or wrap the involved extremity, warm the person and wrap a blanket around them. Don't rub or massage the involved extremity. Wrap it warming at a temperature of 40 to 42 degrees Celsius for about 15 to 30 minutes. If blisters are present and if they are clear and white, these are superficial blisters, then debride them. If the blisters are hemorrhagic, drain the blisters but leave the overlying skin intact. Hemorrhagic blisters are a sign of deeper lesions and are usually covering a deep significant injury. Amputation for necrotic tissue is always delayed. Need to wait for demarcation of the zone of injury. They used to say if frozen in January, amputate in July, except in severe infection or gas gangrene. If the condition of frostbite occurs in children, it may lead to cartilage or growth plate injury, and the child may later develop short digits. The most reliable method to reduce the risk of cold exposure injury is to reduce the thermal heat loss. That can be done through the use of protective gloves, socks, and shoes. Footwear thermal insulation is the most important factor for protecting against cold-induced injury of the feet. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.